Good evening. One quick adjustment to the program. The first scene from Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew will not be seen tonight. The actors involved in that particular scene had to drop out at the last moment. So we will be jumping straight into The Queen's Messenger. In 1928, the first dramatic television program in history was broadcast from right here in Schenectady by General Electric's WGY radio station. The play that was telecast, A Queen's Messenger, by J. Hartley Manners, starred members of the pioneer WGY radio drama players, many of whom also performed on this stage over 80 years ago. A full-length multimedia production recreating this historic TV broadcast is scheduled to be uh, produced later this year. Until then, we hope you enjoy this preview. Our story begins when a diplomatic courier for the British government, a Queen's Messenger, meets a beautiful, mysterious woman at a masquerade ball. She invites him back to her apartment to give him just one more letter to take back to London. It is so good of you to be my messenger. On the contrary, it is a privilege. It is an important letter. Oh, it is most important. If it miscarried, the consequences would be terrible. <laughs> you alarm me. Oh, that is why I did not let you trust it to the postman. You see, letters from Berlin are not always safe. You'll wait a little while. If I may. What is the time? Twenty-five past one. And your train? Train leaves at half past two. And you must go away when? Now, yeah, let me see. Half an hour. And your carriage will wait for you? Oh, yes. I took, it, took care of that all right. Took up whole half my German to make him understand. But he is Russian. So I found out. Oh. Well, I cannot thank you enough for taking so much trouble and going so much out of your way for me. Not at all. The house is on the way to the station. Besides, I'm charmed to do even such a slight service for you. May I in return ask a favor? Of course. I'm afraid you will think it presumption. It is that you remove that mask. Oh my, but I had forgotten. <laughs> By Jove. There, all is revealed. And so you must go away in half an hour? Unfortunately. Unfortunately? Do you not wish to go? <laughs> not now. Then go by the next train. I, I cannot. Dare not? No, duty. Ah, duty. But is not a man's duty always to a woman? Always. Well? My duty is to a woman. It's to my queen. And my queen calls me to Whitehall, London. Oh, indeed. You're a very disappointing person. I'm a queen's messenger. So you carry other messages besides mine? Yes. It's my usual mission. Dispatches and documents. Oh, then you are a very important person. Oh, very. I carry the destinies of countries in my breast pocket. Treaties in my cigar case and an emperor's ransom in my traveling bag. Oh, they are in there? How oh, very wonderful. Oh, a country's peace or a country's trouble, lying quietly asleep in a big bag. Sounds like a dangerous profession. But let me ask you something, messenger. Do you not sometimes feel afraid? Sometimes. <laughs> I thought an Englishman never felt afraid. Only when he looks into a woman's eyes. Oh, you are frightened now, eh? Almost. Of me? Of myself. And yet there's a little word that banishes fear. Love? Duty. Oh, yes. I've nearly forgotten. Duty before all else, yes? Your queen before all others? Yes, my queen before all others. Oh, it is beautiful. It is English. Lucky queen. <laughs> Lucky messenger. Oh, but I've been so stupid. You must be thirsty, right? By Jove, good stuff. Is it not? I like all good stuff. What a lucky chance my being at the ball last night and meeting you, wasn't it? I meant that you should go to the ball. You meant for me to go. I sent you the ticket. Did you? Yes. You arrived four days ago. 
the first night you were here. You went to the theater. So did I. You went to the embassy every morning. You drove past my hotel. I said, who is that? Oh, an English officer. And where does he stay? At the Hotel Royal. Well, I just, I like him. I will send for him. But how? You English are so distant when anyone's looking, especially you diplomatic English. So I thought of something more creative. A successful plan, don't you think? And in a half an hour's time, I will have gone. And we may never meet again. Why must you go by that train? If I missed it, my dispatches would be late. Would that matter very much? <laughs> yes, it would. Very well. If you must, take your big bag and go. Oh, but don't turn me out yet. There's still time still. Do whatever you please. May I smoke? Oh, and I say, don't be angry. You'll spoil everything. Oh, it is you who will spoil everything. Go by the next train. Ah, uh, duty, duty. Oh, what a funny little thing. May I look at it? Of course. Rather neat, isn't it? Oh, yes. What is it for? It's a cigar cutter. See? Huh. Oh, so many keys. Security must be so important for an important man such as yourself. So it seems. Do the messages ever miscarry? Never. And if they did, what would become of the messenger? Depends on the man. What would you do? Never thought of it. Hmm, I wonder. Walk off the edge of things, I would expect. Kill yourself? I expect so. My duty is my honor, my life, my love. Oh, so then there is someone you love. With all my heart and soul. Is she English? Yes. <laughs> Poor girl. If my papers were ever stolen, it would not merely mean my disgrace and my country's ruin. It would mean the, the, the breaking of the dearest heart God ever made. No woman would ever love a man without dignity. But to kill oneself, is that not an act of cowardice? Don't think so. Could you not look trouble in the face? Not that sort. I know one trouble you do not mind looking in the face. Do you? And one you will always seek. What's that? Woman. By Jove, yes. But even that trouble has a face worth looking at. Oh. <coughs> I'm awfully sorry. Oh, hard smoke. <laughs> I'll throw it away. Well, I will give you a cigarette. No, that's all right. Oh, please. That's very good of you. I'm always very good. I'm afraid I'm rather conservative. I'll smoke one of my own. Oh, no, no. Please, I'll smoke with you. Very well. Oh, no, no. Take a, take a, a little, a big one. The little ones are for me. I do not like the big ones. Rather curious. Where do they come from? Persia. Hmm. They're not pure tobacco. Oh no? I hadn't noticed. A mixture, you think? It reminds me of something. Of what? I can't fix it. Then I shall not try then. Strange, I think, how strong and brave a man can be in the face of death, and yet so weak in the face of a woman. Weak? What of it? If man were never weak, half the history of the world would not be written. Because the world is made of men and women? Yes, men and women. A moment ago, you spoke of the dearest heart God ever made. Is this loyal to that heart? You do not answer. It is contemptible. So you brave men are sometimes contemptible? Again, you are silent. A false step with the papers you carry, and you would betray your queen. For that, you would kill yourself. Yet a false step at a masquerade ball with a stranger, and poof, it is nothing. That is rather severe. I am very severe, sometimes. 
I suppose you are never weak. Alas, I am a woman. A decidedly strong-minded one. That is only one side of me. It is only the one side you've given me a glimpse of. I would not like you to see the other. <laughs> God, that drink has gone to my head. <laughs> oh, I suppose you've never felt the grand passion that's left you weak behind the knees. Oh, no. Well, you would be quite wrong. <laughs> You have a lover. I have. <laughs> Indeed. Is he brave? Brave. He is the bravest. He is a man, a soldier, a soldier of his czars, his king of Russia. Had he the mission entrusted to you, he would lay his messages down at the feet of his queen, even if he had to cut a passage through a thousand men to do it. Hey, what's that? A thousand men? I would cut ten. Ten thousand. <laughs> he is a soldier of the battlefield, not of the cafe, the opera, and the brothel. Do you think he would fall openly into a trap? <laughs> that he would carry his precious messages into the very hands of the enemy? Enemy? What do you mean, trap? I mean, messenger, my queen's messenger. That I, too, have a mission for the Imperial Court of Russia, that I have brought you here to rob you of what you profess to be dearer to you than life. Rob me? Your train leaves at 2.30. You will not travel by it. Be careful, messenger, when next you smoke with a Russian lady, that her cigarettes are pure tobacco and not mixed with opium. <laughs> ah, your mission is more dangerous than you suppose, yes? <clears throat> and yet instead of a thousand, Ten thousand men. You only had to face one woman. My head. The room spins. <laughs> what a beautiful trap. <clears throat> had the opiate failed, had you not smoked, I would have had to have used this, see? <laughs> it is full of little bullets and goes off quite easily. Had you escaped the drug, there was yet another risk. Sounds like your coach is ready to leave. Too bad it is only for the messages and not the messenger. Oh, what are you talking about? What's the time? I must be going. Train leaves at half past two. I must be going. Goodbye. Much obliged. Where's my bag? will not catch your train, messenger. Sleep soundly. The lady's mission has not failed. I do not talk openly of my loyalty to every stranger. It is for my love and my mother, Russia. He will wake, but wake to what? Disgrace, shame, death, for he will kill himself. I saw it in his face, and why not? If he were my hero, my messenger, he would do it too. It is the only thing, nothing can heal dishonor. For a woman, yes, for a man, no. Poor fellow. Why should I pity him? If you were my love, my soldier, lying in some woman's room, drugged, robbed, if he... <sighs> no! No! He would never run such a risk. He is loyal to his country and to me. <clears throat> what was that he said? If a man was never weak, then half the history of the world would not be written. It is true. All men have their moments. Yes, even the bravest. Still, poor fellow. He has had his moment. He is waking now to pay the price. 
Oh. Two. The train. No, stop. Your coach is gone. Gone? Yes. Oh no, I must catch your strain. I must. It's too late. Too late? No, you don't understand. It can't be too late. You don't understand. I understand. Oh, my head. I've only a half an hour. Please help me get away. No. No? Oh, good God. You decoyed me here. Yes, since the papers you carry should not reach England. Then listen to me. As strong as the trap you think you have set, you've forgotten one thing. Indeed. You've left the keys to the cage and within my reach. Madam Spy of Russia, you are my prisoner. I'm not the only one who has left, left keys at the grass. The dispatch. Where is it? In the hands of an official of the Russian government. Yours? You forget Leo and the carriage. Oh, he is miles away by now. My trap was better than you thought. Oh, my queen, I have failed you!